All right, hello everyone. This is going to be the defensive maneuvering uh, academics video. Let's just get started. All right, defensive maneuvering. Objective, gain an understanding of the mechanics of the best maneuvering practices to avoid fire. So uh, note here that we're talking about just avoiding fire, not having to uh, return fire or anything like that. And then uh, gaining an understanding of the mechanics. So the, uh, the exercises is where you're going to be actually practicing and getting proficient with it. But this is just explaining how it works, which will help you down the road, but isn't necessarily required to actually be able to do it. All right, here we go. So I'm just going to like do everything I can. So this is a uh, my org and I practicing uh, something we were calling it trial by fire, where we just have a bunch of people gang up on someone, and all they do is try to evade. They don't try to return fire. So in this case, I had uh, four people uh, trying to kill me in our practice session, and this is how it went. And to not get hit by you guys. Ready? Set. Yep. Ready. Go. So I'm like doing a lot of strafing and I'm trying to keep them all in front of me. That's kind of like the key. Are we going section? Everything, everything. It doesn't, I don't care. Whatever you want to do. All right. Oh, look at him go. I'm not going to fire back though, so you don't exactly need to clear each other's tails. I just took a hit. Friendly fire, friendly fire. I guess that's kind of a strategy, right? I'm totally doing that on purpose. Alright. Oh. Oh. Then I get rammed, cockra shot, not really sure what happened there. Alright, so how are we going to do this? So I came up with these tenets of defensive maneuvering, and they're pretty s simple, and uh, sort of in order of importance but um, they're all really important and if you for example this isn't going to matter if you don't maintain situational awareness so they kind of all depend on each other uh, so I wouldn't I would try to worry about as many of them as you can at all times so constantly shift velocity vector in all planes of motion maintain true speed which is the magnitude of velocity so uh, minimize your ship's profile and maintain situational awareness all right, so we're going to talk about each one of these in time, in uh, in turn. All right, constantly shift velocity vector in all planes of motion. Do not fly in a straight line. So we're going to talk about uh, what these planes of motion are. And uh, flying in a straight line is flying in one plane of motion. Uh, the only thing worse than that is not not moving at all, which is zero planes of motion. You're just stationary, and that's the easiest target. The second easiest target for somebody is somebody flying in a straight line. Okay, so uh, how are we going to accomplish shifting the velocity vector in all planes of motion? We're going to ensure the T TVI or the ATVI is always moving against the background, not just your screen. All right, so you should know pr from previous lessons uh, the velocity indicator and then the anti uh i can't remember what the t stands for uh ter terminal velocity no and the anti uh target velocity indicator no it's not the target velocity indicator but it doesn't really matter because i'm going to explain to you what it means in just a second here so tvi right here it's a uh it's basically a depiction of the arrowhead of your velocity indicator. So if you think of your ship as having a velocity vector coming out from it, and that doesn't necessarily have to be uh, going straight out your nose, it can be, you can go sideways in space. So if you think of it as having a velocity vector straight out of you, this is the head. So it's coming straight out of you, so you can't see the actual length of the velocity vector. You can just see the head. And wherever this is pointed, that's where the head of the velocity vector is, in, is uh, pointing at. So here, I'm going to show you how you can move it around. Note that I'm like still uh, pointing in the same area here. It's, it feels a little bit unstable, but I'm just using additive strafe here to move this thing around. And see how it's moving against the background? That's what you want. It doesn't really matter if it's moving against the screen, and I'll show you why in a second. But if it's moving against the background, that means that you're accelerating and uh, you're throwing any kind of targeting solution on you for, 
for a trip. So yeah, you can move it around all like that, and that's going to make it really hard for people to hit you. Alright, so here's another way to move your TVI around, is instead of using additive strafe here, I'm just using pitch and yaw. And you can see it's lagging behind a little bit, it's, you know, that's just the way it is. When you put in these rough, jinky, I call them jinx, uh, these, like, very sudden movements, it's going to lag behind, because space, in space, it's having to use those thrusters to uh, align it, so it's not going to be instantaneous. Uh, so that is also um, moving the TVI against the background, just like we said. Uh, it's just not that stable. All right, so here's an example of not doing that and moving in a straight line. I'll show you real quick. So notice I decoupled here. And it's like, oh, cool, you're moving your nose around just like before. But wait, there's your TVI, and it's stationary. It's not moving against the background. It's moving against the HUD against it's moving across my screen but it's not moving against the background so I'm pretty much flying in a straight line here and uh, all I'm doing is rotating my ship all right which uh, leads me to my next point and some of you might not like this the Starbuck maneuver actually sucks all right I'm gonna explain why now not all forms of the Starbuck maneuver suck and I'm pretty sure I saw in the series her do it right, even though sometimes, yes, it was completely wrong. But um, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in this next video. So Starbuck Maneuver, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, somebody's following you. And uh, I'm not really sure how the controls on the, uh, the Vipers worked in Battlestar Galactica. But uh, she would decouple or hit glide mode or something like that. And... Rotate end for end, and then she do a 180 degree rotation while continuing in the original vector, and shoot at whoever was following her. All right, so that there's what it looks like. And that's it right there. So pretend as if the enemy was back here and was following. See, I'm still going in the original di direction, so I was going backwards there. And then recouple and uh, head back in. Here it is again. So, pretty much instantaneous turns for 180 degrees. And I'm going to demonstrate it on a rock here. Alright, so this is what I see so many people do in Arena Commander. Is they'll they'll boom in on their target, they'll pass their target, showing their butt to their target, and then as soon as they get past, they'll decouple turn and then go straight back for it. Like that. I see that so much in Arena Commander. And that's that's jousting, just in case you didn't know. That's what people complain about with jousting. All right. So uh, always either be strafing or turning while taking fire. So in that entire in that entire run where you the I was booming in on the target, I passed the target, I decouple turned and then I went back in on the target I didn't really strafe or turn at all the entire time my ship stayed in a line so I was using one plane of motion and that is incredibly easy to predict and incredibly easy to aim at alright so if you wanted to move this to the next level and then we're just gonna go step by step so if I wanted two-dimensional motion what I would do is strafe opposite the direction of the turn as I passed my target or if I were just turning. So I'll show a video of that. So here I'm setting up a skidded attack, which I'll explain earlier later, I mean. Uh, and so I just strafed opposite my turn there, so I didn't have time to explain it. So 
I'm yawing right and I'm strafing left here. And that's going to swing out my turn and make it into kind of a plane. And this also is what people use to set up a circle strafe. Or an orbit, as I like to call it. See how I'm like strafing left? And I rolled a little bit. So that's how you turn your one dimensional boom and zoom uh, and then re attack into two dimensions. All right. So the next step should be trying to figure out how to maneuver in three planes. So the first plane, or the uh, single planar motion, is a straight line, which is the Starbuck maneuver, which we talked about. Two planar motion, it ends up being an arc. And the three planar, an example of it is a barrel roll. So uh, the technique I use is to stay pointed where you need to strafe and roll to affect the vector shift. And I'll show you that in a second, but first, this old, uh, this old image here, uh, very classic. So uh, up here, one planar motion, really no different than the Star Starbuck maneuver. The only difference is uh, she would rotate and face the other direction, but she'd still be going in this direction. Barrel roll, three planar. Uh, two planar isn't depicted here. It would just be like a turn, a curve. So three planar, hardest to hit because the enemy has to change his... Uh, gun alignment in three planes of motion at once. So it's that simple. All right, so here's me demonstrating. Uh, remember I said I'm going to use strafe, lateral strafe or vertical strafe, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to uh, use roll to affect the vector shift. And I'm gonna tell that I have vector shift by looking at my TVI. That's like my biggest key to make sure like I said, moving it's the background, I know that I'm accelerating and I'm not staying in a straight line. So I'm looking at my TVI here. It's moving against the background. I'm rolling. This is just a nice gentle roll. Typically, I'll put in, if I'm trying to evade and use this technique, I'll put in full strafe left or right or something like that and then roll. But in this ex for this example, I wanted the TVI to be visible, so I uh, added in some forward strafe so that it was on the screen. So see how it's moving against the background, I'm just rolling. You can see that I can like stay pointed where I want to here, and that's the key. Because you need to be able to point at whatever you want, whether that's your enemy, or somewhere you're going, or your wingman, or something like that. You need to be able to point wherever you want while evading. You can't rely on having to move your nose to move the uh, TVI like uh, I showed in that one example. As you can see, it's moving across the background here. It's got lateral strafe set up. Cool. All right, so that's what you want to do. All right, so we covered the first tenant there. We figured out how we're going to constantly shift velocity vector in all planes of motion. Like I said, the best way is to use lateral or vertical strafe and roll as required. All right, maintain true speed. So here we go. All right. True speed is the magnitude of velocity vector. So um, to refresh you on vectors, there's a direction of velocity or a magnitude. Uh, we talked about the direction, how we're going to manipulate that right now. Here's the magnitude of velocity vector. So that's how long the velocity vector is. And for uh, it corresponds to your true speed. So if you're going forward at 200 meters per second, then your magnitude is 200. If you're going left to 200 meters per second, your magnitude is 200. It's that simple. All right. Currently, no true velocity indicator. So this this is the one people have the most trouble with because right now the HUD doesn't have a true velocity indicator. It only shows uh, speed in the forward direction. And since lots of people like to go sideways, upward, downward, whatever, uh, that can kind of it won't give you an accurate uh, sense of how fast you're going. But we're going to talk about some techniques here. One of them is never strafe in the same direction that the dust is moving. So like I was saying, you got to kind of uh, feel how fast you're going. And the way to do that is by using the dust, the dust particles in space. And I'll show that uh, in a second. But if you think about it, if you, if you strafe in the same direction, you're pretty much strafing against your previous velocity, which is what's going to cause you to slow down so that your magnitude of your velocity vector isn't as high as it possibly could be. So I'll show a video here. 
All right, so I'm strafing left here. You see the dust going right, so that's cool. All right, and then I'm gonna say, all right, I want to go up now. Up isn't against the dust, so that's fine. As long as it's no more than like perpendicular, you can see my TVI up here. All right, so now the dust is kind of flowing this way, and so now I'm at a 90 degree angle. So if I wanted to strafe right now, now I could strafe right a little bit more. So the key is to try not to initiate changes more than 90 degrees off from the direction you're already going. And that's going to keep you at your max speed. Note how my, my forward velocity indicator is indicating like 50 or something, but really I'm pretty sure at this point I've got my full 240 meters per second. Because uh, this is only in the forward direction, so it's important to keep that in mind that this is inaccurate. All right, so that was an example of doing it the wrong way. So I'm going right and I want to go left and I I'm strafing now in the direction of the dust. So that was that was bad. So you never want to go opposite of the direction you're going. So in that case, I slowed down there momentarily and somebody could could have easily shot me. All right, so technique, strafe in opposite direction of turns, especially with comp stab or decoupled. Hey, it's the same one as uh, with the uh, previous tenant. Yep, strafe opposite direction of turns, that'll help out. And uh, that kind of swings your turn out more. Uh, I did some testing and I uploaded a video. It was the pr video previous to this of me testing out the turns with comp stab, no comp stab, decoupled, and then all three of those with boost. Tested them a bunch of times. Wasn't exactly scientific, but the biggest takeaway I got from it was that your turns in comm stab or with no comm stab, they, uh, in terms of time to shift your velocity vector, they're pretty much equivalent. I mean, the difference is fairly negligible, less, you know, less than maybe like 10%. But uh, what I what I want to focus on is whatever you choose to use and whatever's best for your ship, try to uh, make make it so that you have all your options available to you. So if you're flying around with comp stab mode, you know that you're not going to have drift. If you want to keep drift so that you can keep your speed on, then strafe in opposite direction of turns like I showed. If you're yawing right, strafe left, especially if you're taking fire so that you can keep your speed up. Otherwise, it's going to slow you down too much. All right, cool. Maintain true speed done. Uh, next tenant, minimize your ship's profile. This one's pretty simple. All right, so you're going to orient your ship so that the least surface area is exposed to fire as possible. So I'll show you that real quick. All right, so different profiles. And this is pretty easy to figure out what I'm talking about here. So, like, you can see here the, uh, the Avenger. Uh, Jacob Lines pointed straight at me, so he's got a fairly low target profile here, which means the area that his ship is taking up on my screen, I mean, he's really close, so that it kind of looks bigger than it would normally, but uh, the area that he's taking up on my screen is smaller, which means he'd be harder to hit with projectiles, because projectiles could go here, or go here, or go here, or go here, as opposed to... This one, uh, you see Toothbrush here, he's almost completely perpendicular to me uh, with his uh, top section exposed to me. So he's got a high profile here. So it'd be much easier, more surface area on my screen, more real estate to hit uh, with any kind of weaponry. So uh, this is a high profile. That's not what you want. All right, you can see here another one. Uh, this is a side view. You can see also pretty low profile, almost as low as a uh, front facing but not quite as low uh, now this is going to depend on your ship so uh, right now most ships have smaller profiles when you're uh, pointed straight at them or when they're pointed straight at you sorry um, some exceptions in the future might be stuff like the Xeon Scout uh, the Delta it's kind of got the same profile in every direction except for top or bottom is a little bit more but side versus forward there's really not that much different. It's got insanely small profile and is very hard to hit. Oh, I don't think I wanted to go there. There we go. Okay, so technique, stay pointed at the target. Yep, 
that's going to work um, for a lot of reasons. So you stay pointed at your target and you're minimizing your ship profile and it's a lot easier to keep track of them so you can continue to minimize your ship profile. All right, another technique, use radar target pin, rotate it so that it's off to the right or left side of the screen. So when I would use this, since I typically like to stay pointed at my target at all times, uh, which you'll see in future videos, is uh, if I've got more than one, so like in that video where I was demonstrating the four people on me, um, I was rotating so that they were per, uh, kind of off to the side rather than above me or below me for the uh, the, the radar or the uh, target pins. So fire from wild cards, which means other adversaries other than the one that you're focusing on right now. So if you got multiple on you and they're there's one off the side of the screen, then you want to rotate it so that they're off to the side and not uh, above or below so that you don't get that huge profile like that Hornet had. Um, and if you lose your target, like let's say you're doing a high speed pass and you're just not quick enough on the rotation and you he goes off the screen. So immediately what you can do to minimize your profile is to, uh, is to just roll so that his target pin is or his target arrow is off to the right or to the left. Uh, remember that video that I showed you with people doing the joust, or actually it was myself doing the joust, uh, in a single planar line. Uh, the way that I affected the turn was with pitch, and th exactly what's going to happen is what that you saw in that hornet. It looks like this when you turn around when you do those decouple turns uh, because you're just exposing everything and you're in a straight line so it's incredibly easy to hit. So yes, that is important to not do it that way. All right, so target is lost after pass, cool. All right, so here I've got, a, I've got an image of uh, me myself uh, in some vandal swarm and you can see I've got a uh, my target arrow it's pointed off to the left so I'm minimizing my profile just like I talked about I've got a couple other advisories here of enemies and they're pointed off to my left so that's exactly what I want if you look at my radar here most of it is to the left or to the right of me I'm in the center uh, there's one in front of me but I've got him in sight and I know he's not a threat so that's kind of a uh, that's kind of the way you want to do that. So I'm minimizing my profile to all these, to pretty much everybody. And here's what it would, here's what it looks like to Rook, because the guy targeting me is Rook. Obviously, I'm not in a Hornet. I'm in Gladius, but this is exactly what his uh, profile is going to look like. Okay, last and uh, one of the most important things: maintain situational awareness. So keep the largest threat, largest threats in front of you. Yeah, definitely. And largest threat, it might be the closest person, like it was uh, when I was uh, defending against those four guys in that initial video. Uh, it could be a super hornet, something with better weaponry, um, or it could just be everyone. If you can keep everyone in front of you, that's the ideal situation um, because that makes it the hardest for them to aim at you without hitting each other and it makes it the easiest for you to keep track of everybody all right use your radar very important uh, just like I showed there uh, communicate with your wingman so if you've got a wingman he can tell you uh, who's targeting who's targeting you and uh, where they're coming from and all that and that's great and then uh, when flying towards multiple targets engage from the side rather than the center. Um, people might know this as the bracket. So like if you've got two targets in front of you, let's say like here and here, and you want to engage this guy, you're not going to fly up the middle and turn left. Or I wouldn't even like just fly straight at them. I'd fly up the left side and then turn right. That way you're setting it up so you can keep both of them in your windscreen. Does that make sense? I hope so. Maybe I'll make a video of that. All right, so same thing here with the situational awareness piece. I got everybody on my radar. I've got my uh, target arrow. I've got my two other arrows. I've got um, everything here kind of feeding into me and telling me what's going on. So it's important to pay attention to that stuff. All right, so that's it for the tenets of defensive maneuvering. And next, 
moving forward exercises. So uh, after this video, there's a bunch of exercise videos, very more focused on actual application in the game. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of touch on stu some stuff briefly here. So I want you to choose techniques that work for you, your ship, and your mission. So um, if a an arcing zoom doesn't work for your Super Hornet and all that, then you know maybe pick one of the other ones. Uh, yeah, particularly this uh, kind of has to do with zooms. So choose a zoom and get really good at it and uh, try to use it as much as possible. And I talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each in uh, each zoom video. So uh, those should help you out. But another example is if you're practicing like the Rick zoom, that might not be so great depending on your mission. If you got wingmen, you know, maybe that's not as, as great because you're not going to be able to uh, stay within range of them quite as much as you normally would with like an arcing zoom. All right. Some ships need to use boost zoom IFCS modes differently. Like I was saying, Super Hornet might be different. Uh, you're probably going to have to use boost a lot to evade fire, but you can still do it. And I demonstrate in some of my videos that it can be done with what is currently the uh, bulkiest ship, the Hornet. And uh, IFCS modes, yep, some ships, they just work better when you got Comstab off or Comstab on or in decoupled modes. So experiment and figure out what you like. Practice mechanics in free flight, then find a partner to play trial by fire with like I was in that first video. That is definitely going to help you out. So Use some asteroids, practice your uh, defensive maneuverings, get the mechanics and the muscle memory down, then find someone to shoot at you while you try to evade. And uh, have him tell you, you know, it's like, hey, when you did that loop thing, that really worked, and then my lag pip went crazy, and I couldn't target you. That kind of stuff. Help each other out. Above all else, keep strafing and rolling. Uh, so <laughs> that's... I. That, it's pretty much as simple as that. If you are always strafing and always rolling and always watching your speed, uh, you're going to be able to evade most fire. It doesn't matter what kind of ship you're at. All right. And that's it. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully this helps some of you, and I'll see you later.